In the grand strategy world of Crusader Kings III, the year is 1066, and the Holy Roman Empire controls most of Western Europe. But in the depths of France, there's a man whose destiny is to uproot society, a man whose family has fallen so far from grace, yet he will be the one to reclaim their podium, a man whose name will course through the veins of history. The commoner will stand in awe before him, in a world full of tyranny and corruption, he will stand against the crowd. He will make the change. Through wars, schemes, machinations of all sorts, he will have his vengeance. The world will know his family's name once more. That begs the question, who is this knight in shining armor? And will he be able to restore his family's legacy? Count Herbert IV of Vermandois is something else. He's an absolute loser. His stats are terrible and he has no power. But there is one thing going for him. He's a Carling. The last Carling. Well, last landed member of the house Carling, not the dynasty, but that's just little details. His family once ruled the entirety of Western Europe, and now all that is left of them is this sorry excuse of a count. So can we take this blundering fool and restore his family's greatness? It might just be the hardest challenge in Crusader Kings 3, but we won't stop until the Carolingian borders are restored. Don't get so excited there, Herbert. You're still worthless. For now. Another thing that Herbert has going for him other than his dynasty is his neighbor just so happens to be William of Normandy who just so happens to have an army slightly smaller than the Byzantine Empire. So let's secure an alliance. His military is only 20 times the size of our own. And why not make that marriage matrilineal? Let's put some Carling babies in the British royal family. Maybe one day one of them will become king. We can then change our contract with our liege, who is just a 14 year old boy. How does that make you feel, Herbert? This kid is 20 years younger than you and he controls the entire French kingdom. But by changing our contract, we can guarantee a position on his council. That way we can demand that he makes us his steward, netting us a nice two extra gold per month. One day, we can hopefully make more money than the teacher's salary we currently have. We can also go down the wealth-focused lifestyle. This will allow us to unlock meritocracy, which gives us the claim throne scheme. Maybe I shouldn't have made fun of Herbert for being weaker than Philippe because he might not be for much longer. Herbert here is a cool 34 years old, so it isn't surprising that he has a son and heir. So let's educate that boy. That way we can ensure he doesn't turn out like his heathen pa. It looks like he already has a diligent trait, so we're off to a good start. One thing we really need is more land. We can't expect to restore the Carolingian Empire by holding one single county. So let's set Bishop Amar, wait, Forward learning? Seriously? Well, at least he can still fabricate a claim. We'll fabricate this claim on the county of Clermont, since it is the only county that we have the chance at defeating in a war. By ourselves, at least. Obviously, with the help of Big Bill and his small army, we might be able to take on someone just a little bit stronger. But let's get that claim going. It's only going to take this benighted, ignorant fool two years to fabricate a claim on a single county. Don't worry, Amar. I'm sure you have a good personality. Anyway, we should probably wait for good old Bill to finish his war before we start our little conquest. I'm not going to risk losing my first war against a little county like Clermont. While we wait for Amar to finish his fabrication, we can take a little trip to Paris. That way we can pay our homage to our liege. So let's get out there and march through the mild winter of northern France. My offering of my humble service seems to satisfy Philippe, and he confirms my right to rule my land. Hail the king. Let's hurry home. It can get a little frigid in the north of France. If there's one thing that Herbert detests, it's touching grass. So thankfully he can go inside again. Hey, would you look at that? It seems like Bill wants me to help him fight the Norwegians. Sure, but I don't know what he thinks my 500 troops are going to do. We can try and siege holdings, that way we don't have to fight, and we might be able to gain some of the loot. Uh oh. 
Looks like the infidels in Norway didn't take too kindly to my siege. And now we have no troops. No way I'm going back to that war again. But at least I unlocked the lifestyle perk. And now I can use the claim throne scheme. Oh, Philippe. Looks like he might not be king much longer. I keep trying to sway the Pope so that'll give me a claim on the Duchy of Brittany. That way I would have some much stronger holdings to bolster my income and military line. But this Pope must really have something against me, because he certainly doesn't want to be my friend. Anyway, looks like I brought my son to the very family friendly hanging of a thief. I taught him a lesson in moderation, so that way he had become temperate, gaining him much more piety. He's already better than his pa. Remember that battle I fought against the Norwegians? That battle was the only help that Bill got in his war, so I came out with a cool 300 prestige, and a new friend in good old Bill. And with that prestige, I declare war for my claim on the county of Clermont. Even though the chances were even, I was able to win the first battle, swinging the war vastly in my favor. The Clermont army was able to kill enough of my men that I was not able to siege a castle, so I have to call in Bill's son. Bill, the Red. This way I don't have to worry about having enough men to outnumber the Claremont garrison. But there isn't any need to siege, because we capture our enemy in the second battle. Herbert now has double the land he had before. Herbert goes to his spy master, Gilbert, and instructs him to find any evidence that would allow Herbert to blackmail his neighboring rulers and vassals. By unlocking golden obligations, Herbert can bring in tons of gold to fuel the expansion of the Carling land. Would you look at that? Herbert found himself a little kitty cat. Now what to name it? Yeah, Pepin, after the first Carling Emperor. Hopefully this cat does some good for me. It seems that Yud seeks to be a forgiving ruler, which I'm all for since this will grant him even more piety. Surely he'll become the most pious of men. He is now 11 years old and already has 13 stewardship too, which is even more than Herbert himself, and Herbert has his wife assisting him, so I wonder how much Eudes will have when he becomes 16. While we were in a feast in Clermont, Herbert's scheme to claim the French throne was completed, and with the odds heavily in his favor, Herbert laid claim to France. Nothing can stop him now. He starts a faction to install himself on the throne, just in case any of his fellow vassals like him enough, or think that Philippe's beard isn't deserving of a kingdom. I mean, look at that thing. Before we can take the French kingdom, we need a little bit more power. So now that we have enough piety, the Pope will grant us a claim on the duchy title. I don't know what Thibault did to make the Pope so upset with him, but at least that will give us a claim to the entire duchy of Champagne. We obviously don't have enough troops to take this duchy ourselves, but our good friend Bill sure does. I spent the first couple months of this war running around randomly while waiting for the English army to show up. Then we went to battle. I don't think anyone could have predicted that we would have won that battle. I mean, it wasn't heavily stacked in our favor or anything. But now we've taken out most of their army and all we have to do is siege down the land and the duchy is ours. Even though we got the duchy title, we didn't get any baronies that we could hold directly. But that's okay, since my new vassals will probably rise up against me, and then we could just revoke their titles from them. But remember when Herbert told his spymaster to look for any secrets on his neighboring rulers and vassals? Well, it seems that he found out that Duchess Matilda has a disputed heritage. This will give us a nice 85 gold every five years. But look, just as I expected, my new vassals aren't too happy with this new leadership. I will not be threatened. Now we can call in the bills and crush this little rebellion. After a little bit of battling and sieging, the war is over and our vassals are imprisoned. Now no one will get mad when we revoke their land. Once I increase the new land's control, I will be making nearly 10 gold per month. And with that gold, we can go on a hunt. It looks like bison were spotted in the county of Clermont recently, so why not hunt there? 
After a couple days of searching, we found a bison. After it, we ride. It seems like we backed the beast into a corner. I don't want to die, so we'll just attack as a group. But before we could take the mighty beast down, it caught my brother Pierre and severely injured him. I'm sure it'll be fine though. It looks like my beast slaying abilities have gotten out because Philippe himself invited me to his own hunt. Unfortunately for Philippe, I'm not looking to slay any beast. There is one that I have my eyes set on. As we ride through the wood, Philippe gets separated from the rest of the hunters. I share a look with his master of the hunt, who nods grimly. Today is the day. It's done. Philippe is no more, and now his infant son is the king. This boy hasn't had the time in his life to develop any relationships, so this is a perfect opportunity to push my claims. But first, I will seek out the favor of God. Let's go on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. A long journey and a costly one, but it will be worth it. On our way, we meet our fair share of incidents, but in the end we make it. I am now a pilgrim. With the level 2 piousness achieved, I gain 1,062 piety, bringing my total to 2,135. Someday I might be able to form my own religion. We rush back home, for we have great plans ahead, with some incredibly strong allies and a couple vassals who joined my faction. Now was the time to press my demands. It could have been a quick and easy overthrow, but young Guichard had something to say about my claim. Your claim on my title is no more real than the stories we tell children at night. No matter how many misguided fools you have gathered here to help carry out your scheme, I will not bend to such a collection of dung. I'd rather die than see my birthright fall to someone so low. Wow, what an incredibly talented writer. No way a seven-year-old kid wrote this. Well, I'm not going to stop now because of a well-worded letter the more it is. I call in my good friend Bill and raise my own army, which has become quite strong on its own. For some reason, Guichard raises his army in the very north of France, so I just march right on his capital. Once sieged, I will have a strong lead in this war. And look at that. We don't even control the entire county, but we still have 18% war score in our favor. Now let's march north and find Guichard's army. They're a formidable opponent, but nothing is able to stop the sheer manpower of our combined armies. And now it's just a matter of time before the war will be won. After sieging down a couple more castles and fighting another battle, we did it. The war is over, and now I am the king of France. Let them see their new king. Even though France is comfortably under our control, we are still not finished. There is much more land that we must conquer if we are to restore the Carolingian borders. But that is a tale for another time. But don't fear, this story will continue.